Okay, so in today's lesson, we'll take a look at translations in the coordinate plane. And the easiest way to think of translations, or another term, is these are slides. They are slides or shifts. We just take some shape, some point, some segment, and we slide it over. And we slide it along what's called a vector. Specifically, this is called a translation vector. So if we look at uh, point A here, and again, notation in geometry is important. So we see it's notated as point A. I see it performs some sort of translation along this translation vector. So it slides in this direction for this length, and it becomes A prime. Again, that apostrophe up there in math is called the prime symbol, and that notates that this is after a transformation. Again, the notation for a vector, a couple different ways to give it. In this case, vector k signifying this segment, so it slides in this direction for this length, is given as k with this little vector symbol over the top. So in this example, we're going to take this quadrilateral, so a four-sided figure, and we're going to slide it along this vector. So if I take in your case, you'd want to take a ruler or a straight edge, and you'd mark this vector. And what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll slide it up to each of these. And so I have a point here then, which is G prime. I'm going to slide this again. So I just put the end of it at the point, and I mark my new point, the transformed image, this would be J prime. So notice I'm not adjusting the angle of this segment at all, this vector, and I'm not adjusting the distance. Once I've drawn it, and you would just use your straight edge, you'll move it to each point and you'll graph the new points. This would be I prime. So now I'm ultimately done with this vector. We'll just leave them up here. And now I can connect my four points and I've slid or I've translated this quadrilateral by the given vector so it just moves slightly up and to the right. And each point, G, H, I, and J, have all moved by that same vector. So if we're asked to identify in this example which of these, A, B, C, or D, appears to be the triangle A, B, C translated along the vector W. Again, they've, uh, they've drawn the vector, so I know it moves uh, to the right and slightly downward by this distance and they've notated it here as vector w. So all I really have to do is look to see which of these has transformed or translated the triangle ABC by that given vector. And I see this one appears to be down slightly to the right. This one appears to just be horizontal. I can kind of check these to see, connect corresponding points and see which of these appear to be the same as vector w. And these are really the four vectors. So I can see that this vector here is nothing like vector w. So it's not d. This vector is nothing like vector w. So it's not b. This vector is nothing like vector w. So it's not c. And this one is pretty close. That's probably my drawing error. And you see this is a slightly smaller image. So it's not quite the same length but the correct answer would be A. It's the only one that has slid even remotely down and to the right. When we look to do these in the coordinate plane, uh, it's pretty easy to tell. They give us again some notation. These special parentheses here that are more angled instead of curved notate that this is a vector. And all that really gives me is the direction and the distance. So what I know from this 
is that I need to add 7, because it's a positive 7, to any x value. This is again an x and a y. So I'm adding 7 to any x coordinate, and I'm adding 4 to any y component. If this was negative 7, I would subtract 7 from the x value. So this vector notation as a coordinate tells you what you need to do to manipulate. You see this up here. This would be the a. This would be the b. So I'm going to take my coordinate x, y, and I'm going to add 7 and add 4. That's going to adjust it. So you see in this case where they have the x, y coordinate of point p, they take the value of x, which is negative 2, and they add 7 to it because that's the vector. They take the y value of 3, and they add 4 to it because that's the y component of the vector. And so negative 2 plus 7, this is 5. And then 3 plus 4 is 7. So your new coordinate is 5, 7. And this would be called p prime. So they've taken p, translated along the vector 7, 4. It moves 7 units to the right, and then it moved 4 units up, so by 7 and 4. And that's how they come up with that vector. And the new coordinate for this is 5, 7. So all we're doing with translations in the coordinate plane is sliding them along the given vector. You're saying, does it move right or left, up or down? That dictates whether it's plus or minus, and the degree in which it does so gives us the value. So in this example, I have triangle TUV, TUV, and it gives me the vertices, negative 1, negative 4, that's the point here, 6, 2 is U, and 5, negative 5 is V, and it's moving along the vector negative 3, 2. So to find this, all I have to do, the easiest way when you have a, a graph, is to just move 3 units this is my x, this is the y, so that's 3 units to the negative, so that is to the left, and 2 units on y, which is up. So I just take each point, and I'll move this 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2. So there is t prime. I take v, and I move it 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. There is v prime. I take point U and I move it 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. And there's U prime. I connect the dots. And I have the triangle TUV prime. And it's been translated by the vector negative 3, 2. If I didn't know this vector, I could easily count that. And you'll see that in a future example here. If I want to know how this triangle translated, how did TUV become TUV prime, I do the exact same thing. I just count from my graph. Well, point T to become T prime moved in this vector, and specifically 1, 2, 3 units left, so that's negative 3 because it moved left on the horizontal, and it moved up 1, 2. Since up for the y values are positive, that's a positive 2. And we use these, the vector brackets here, they're more angled than the standard parenthesis, and that notates the vector negative 3, 2. So let's look at another one here. I have the graph of ABC with vertices negative 3, negative 2, 4, 4, 3, negative 3, and they move along this vector. So we need to figure out which of these is triangle ABC prime. Again, this is how they move. This is the vector. So what I do to each value is I'm going to subtract 1 and add 3. So that's going to give me the new values, a prime. If I subtract 1 from negative 3, I have a negative 4. If I add 3 to a negative 2, I have a plus 1. B prime, I'm taking 1 away from 4, and I'm adding 3 to 4. And C prime, I subtract 1 from the 3, so it moved 1 unit to the left, and I add 3 to the negative 3, so it moved 3 up, and here's my new coordinates. 
And it looks like the correct answer is actually D. So very easy to do on a graph. You just count left or right, up or down. And if you need to actually get the coordinates for them without the graph, you're just adding or subtracting to the X component and the Y component according to the vector. So we'll look at one more here in the graph. So we have the soccer ball that's being translated and we're gonna describe the translation of the soccer ball from position three. So describe from position three to position four. So sometimes when you have, you know, kind of word problems, story problems, it's easier to, to kind of underline the question. I like to highlight important information. It helps you, you focus on what's important. So I need to describe how it moves from three to four. So I'm concerned about this part right here. So I see that as a vector, it moves in this direction from three to four. So in order to describe that, to move three to four, I just have to, I move one, two units to the right. So written as a vector, that's two units right. Remember you have an X and a Y. So the X, one, two, I can replace with the value two because that's how many units it moved to the right. So it's positive. And then it moved down one, two. So I know that that's the Y value. and it moved down, so it is actually a negative two. So bring any questions you have on translations and vectors to class with you, and we'll take a look at some more examples and get a little practice.